There's no doubt that the best way to understand Shakespeare is to hear and speak his words and what words they are. His vocabulary is more than four times that of an educated person today. In fact, he's so delighted in words that he coined many himself, not merely for their abstract meaning, but as sensual objects that convey meaning through their sound as well as their sense. And he didn't seem interested in having his plays read. He certainly made no effort in getting them published. He intended them to be seen and heard. In these days of email, television, film, magazines, telephones, oh, we seem to be obsessed with communication. And yet, you know, I suspect that we've lost much of the ability to communicate through language that the Elizabethans had. And their method of communication was simple, the voice. I talked earlier about how my film work had allowed me to disregard my voice, and how when I came back here, Sis and Andrew gave me exercises to help me relearn how to use my vocal instrument. This workshop deals with many of those exercises, teaching us how to open the voice, use the sounds and resonance created in our bodies to explore more fully the words and images of Shakespeare's text. Andrew Wade will lead us in breathing exercises, allowing the voice to grow in resonance and acquire a greater vocal range. Because only when the physical instrument is warmed up can we be ready to warm up the imagination. And this session is about group work in voice and language. Working in a group can be even more valuable than working on our own as we learn to listen and trust the sounds of our fellow actors, creating a company voice in the truest sense. And in this tape, we'll see a compilation of the voice exercises the actors did at intervals throughout the workshop. Finally, tape five is a preparation tape, which Andrew Wade led with a, a group of young actors. And this goes through all aspects of the voice preparation work, without which an actor will be lost. This tape is made up of the voice exercises which Andrew Wade and I did with the group during our two days together. Our focus was to be the text, discovering ways of working on Shakespeare's language, how to make that rich and often really extravagant imagery connect with us, connect with ourselves, with our spirit, yet feel truthful in today's world. And by this, to open up new meanings for ourselves and perhaps be surprised by them. But before we could focus on that work in detail, we needed to do some good straightforward voice work so that everyone felt in touch with their own voice and ready to use it as fully as possible. And it was also important to work on a piece of text together sharing that language round, hearing each other's rhythms, hearing each other's voices and resonance, and through this to become sensitive to each other's rhythm and sound. This takes time because it is to do with listening. And it is so valuable to work collectively on a piece of text in this way. And I'm certain it was this work that made the group come together so quickly. It allowed them to lose any inhibitions that they might have about the work and just enjoy working together. So Andrew and I started each session with voice work, exercises, as we know, for breathing, for relaxation, muscularity of the lips and the tongue, etc., and to put us in touch with our own individual and, of course, unique resonance and sound. These exercises are regularly used in the Royal Shakespeare Company during rehearsals and before each performance. And I hope they will prove useful to you as a guide to your own preparation work. Okay, let's just take a few minutes just to 
focus on different parts and just to let go. Just first of all, very gently, just roll your head just slowly to one side and slowly back the other way. And then perhaps just once or twice, just very gently, just press your head back onto the floor so that you consciously feel the muscles tensing in the back of the neck and then release them and just feel the difference. And just tune into the shoulders and just give them a little shake so you really feel them just easy on the floor, not, not gripping, not, not, not held. The actors are feeling their weight across the floor, their back spread and their shoulders and neck relaxed. All this in preparation for the work on breathing. That moment of quiet, when you can focus on the breath, helps you to pinpoint exactly where the breath is coming from, and therefore where the voice is rooted. In this position, you will feel no pressure to work at the breath. You will just feel its impulse. Shoulder blades nice and easy, not gripping from inside. So your backs are long and wide. And then trying to keep as much of that sensation as you can while we just go through some breathing and sound work. Just bring the backs of your hands around to your lower ribs at the side. Just where your rib cage bulges most. Found them? Yeah. Don't copy me. And with the backs of your hands on those lower ribs, just whatever breath you've got in there at this moment in time, just sigh it right out to feel those ribs coming together. Go. And half a ten, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and empty, and replace that breath, widen, a little loud if you want to, hey for ten, go. Breathing out slowly to the count of ten, Two, not in order to practice control, but five, rather to stimulate the next breath, seven, so that the ribs eight, open out even more, nine. yet without tensing the upper chest, neck and shoulders. Although we seldom need to use that much breath, it is essential that those lower ribs are able to move freely. For when the chest is free, it gives body and resonance to the voice. And then wait each time for that knee to replace your breath, and perhaps in through the nose to stimulate the ribs, as you feel them opening out. Open the mouth quite wide and sigh all the breath out at the same time. Go. Empty and wait for that knee to replace your breath and widen your ribs out. Let it settle there a moment and hum for ten. Go. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And empty and wait. Pop a hand onto your lower stomach so you can just be conscious of that, that breath reaching right down and that breath starting the sound. If you put your hand down on your stomach, you will feel the muscles below the waist giving space to the diaphragm as you breathe in. This is where we want to feel the voice starting. We want to feel the voice sitting down and the breath touching the sound out. By this I mean you become aware of the breath starting the sound very smoothly, without any jerk. In modern texts we seldom need this extended breath, but in Shakespeare the thoughts are often very full and complex. If we break it up too much, we lose its essential energy and excitement. It also makes it harder to understand and be understood. Tongue tip vibrating, Z, go. Zzzz. 
Right, take your time, but um, begin to think about getting up. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know where to focus, we better have a spot. That one there. Send your breath there. And feel down. And voice that breath of V. <laughs> Bounce a bit, pat your chest. We talk a lot about resonance. It simply means making full use of the spaces in your body which are able to amplify the sound, i.e. the chest, the spaces in the head, etc. If you are properly relaxed and placing the voice, these spaces will add quality and resonance to the sound you make. Just to really feel those muscles. Good, and that breath, good. But, 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 yeah. but. Not too loud, just really feel the muscularity. But, but, and that vibration. But, 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 good. Bounce a bit if you feel the need to, I do. Yeah, good. Okay, just really find the, the, the shape every time. But, 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 yeah. Ma, 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 ma. Good, and send it to that spot. Ba, boo, boo. Bo, bo, mo, 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 ma, ma, pa, 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 ta, ta, za, za, ja, ja, la, la. Good. Bounce a bit. Good. Just make a megaphone with your hands around you, under your nose. Ba, 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 ma, ma, pa, pa, ma, ma, ga. Ga, ga, ga. Go, just find that vibration. Ga, ga. Again, back of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Ga, ga. Ha, ha. Good. Just make it a little bit too much tension so we get ga, 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 ga. Ha, ah, yeah. <laughs> and, find it, yeah. and find it with your full resonance. Ga, ga, ga. So we're just root rooting ourselves, yeah? Yeah. Ga, ga. Yeah, the sound's on your term, yeah, not on somebody else's, yeah? yeah. Ga, ga, ga. Yeah. yeah. Ga. Ga. We need to keep checking on the vibration of these voiced consonants. It is those consonants that help to keep the tone forward and enable the voice to carry through space. Also keep checking the resonance on the chest. Pat your chest for the resonance. Mm. Move up in pitch if it takes your fancy. Mm. It doesn't have to be literally. <laughs> mm, good, open to ah. Uh, good, have a stretch and a yawn and a vowel. Uh, this work on the muscularity of the lips and tongue is vital. It is not about speaking well, what it does is give the actor the freedom to do what he or she wants with the words, to find their edge, their nuance, to place them lightly but specifically. This clarity of consonant is crucial when you are working in different spaces. For instance, in a large space, it is the edge, the vibration of the consonant, which is needed to carry through the space rather than increase volume. In a small studio space, it is this clarity which will define the thought and which will enable you to be heard while still keeping a sense of intimacy and quiet. All these exercises took time, of course, and you are seeing only a part of them, but they were central to the work. Now, Let's see how these exercises can be put into practice on a piece of text. I've chosen a piece from Titus Andronicus, the speech where Titus tells us of the extremity of his grief when he learns what has happened to Lavinia, his daughter. She has had her tongue cut out and her hands cut off, and she is brought before him. He is desolated. Rage that I must see. 
greasy wax mad, threatening the welkin with his big swollen face. And wilt thou have a reason for this oil? I am the sea. Hark how her sighs are blow. She is the weeping welkin, I the earth. Then must my sea be moved with her sighs. Then must my earth with her continual tears become a deluge overflowed and drowned. For why my bowels cannot hide her woes? But like a drunkard must I vomit them. Then give him leave, for losers will have need to ease their stomachs with their bitter tongues. It's amazing, isn't it? Okay, just do very, very quietly what you were doing with Andrew earlier. Ba, ba, ba. But feel what I what I want you to do. I don't want ba, 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 which is fine. But I really want you to feel the muscular activity of it. Ba, ba, ba. So you over now to convey this grief in the sounds. We need the language to relate physically to the feeling. That is to say, the weight of the words must somehow equal the weight of the grief. So we need to explore these sounds fully. Now just read this one more time. Really feel those vibrations. Okay. If, if there were reason reason for these miseries, miseries then, then into limits. limits. Sorry. So into what? Limits. limits. Could I bind my woes? When heaven. Sorry, when what? When heaven doth weep, doth not the earth overflow. If the winds rage, doth not the sea wax mad, threatening the welkin with his big swollen face. And wilt thou have a reason for this oil? I am the sea. Hark how her sighs doth blow. She is the weeping welkin, I the earth. Then must my sea be moved with her sighs. Then must my earth with her continual tears become a golden overflowed and drowned. For why? Can you all feel that? The measure of the language and the measure of the feeling. But could you all hold and just <laughs> hand? And I want you to pull, just read the beginning of it, and pulling really hard against each other. Okay. If, if there were a reason for these miseries, then into limits could I find my woes. This pulling disturbs us and somehow helps us to feel the cost, the pain of the language and of his grief. As the body is pulled, we hear the words extending, the vowels extending. I am the sea. And the consonants vibrating, the awareness that the whole body is engaged in speaking those words and in a way feeding them. The language has the power of a landslide. As Edward Bond, our English playwright, would say, words are like the top of an earth shift. Can you feel that? Do you feel how actually just by pulling all those vowels lengthened out? So, but we will do similar exercises later. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll. That's the end of our warm up. <laughs> now I can only play one scale, right? So we're doing <laughs> ma 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 up the scale, right? Okay. But really sharp here. Really get those muscles going. The muscular bounce. Ready. I just want to see it. Ma ma ma. Ma ma ma. Ma ma ma. Ma ma ma. It really gets on your nerves. 
It was a bit ma ma ma, and I want ma 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 each one. Okay, right, go. Ma 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 but we won't do it again. But don't let that happen again. <laughs> now I want to do ma 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 on each note. All right. So keep that sharp. Ready? And that vowel very open. Are you breathing properly? Right. Go. Ma 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 ma. Right. Ma 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 ma. This is an exercise I'm rather fond of, though it's a little bit mad and it's quite hard to explain the reasons for it. But you have to feel it as you do it, you feel the benefit through your bodies. Right? On to O. Do those vowels feel nice and open and keep yeah, your yeah. resonance? Right, what I'm going to ask you to do is run any way you like on the mamamas, but keep them sharp as I shall stop you. And it'll, uh, and then on the vowel, and I'll give you a different vowel each time, I want you to stand still and just open your arms in the shape of that vowel that, that you feel. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's not literal. No, not, no, not literal. <laughs> no, absolutely not literal. <laughs> It's very, uh, I don't know, experiential. I don't know what the word is. Okay. Right. But I just want, okay. So can we do that now, right? Start, keep those M's going. We'll start with, you mustn't enjoy it. <laughs> start with R, right? But run any way you like. Go. <laughs> First running and finding the vibration of the M sound on our lips, so you feel that vibration, and then being still and singing the vowel sounds to discover an open shape for it in your body. want to do it for is to feel these op the openness of this vowel because in fact uh, possibly we made open sounds before we made closed sounds and perhaps those open sounds contained in it were our, our need 
I hate using the word feeling, our need for that moment. And then perhaps the closed sounds started to make language, which then started to make sense in a way, make our sense go. Just going through the sounds of the language is a very useful thing to do. In ordinary speech, we don't think about those sounds we're making. We use them naturally, and in modern life, we are fairly clipped and short with them. But when we are using language for a purpose, to define something, as the actor always is, we must know how that purpose is conveyed. It is never totally naturalistic, but somehow is always placed, always defined. There is something happening in the language, under the language, which takes us into that other world, the world of the play, and we must be sensitive to this. Now, obviously, we don't all make the same sounds. That does not matter. But we do need to be aware of each sound and hear it. Each sound strikes a different note, a different awareness. <laughs> <laughs> and then, ga ga ga. Now, can you feel that vibration down there? Now, do ga 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 a bit tight. Ga ga ga. And then loose. Ga ga ga. Right. So you've got those that going on. You've got nga nga nga. La. Bit sharper L. La. Ta ta ta. Da da da. Feel that vibration there. Na na na. Pa pa pa. Ba ba ba. Ma ma ma. So you've got all those things happening. Now the vowels. Let's just do these are the English vowels. Who. Who? This is to do with the lip vowels. Who? Who? Whose? Whose? Who? Who? Hook? Hook? Ho? Ho? Home? Home? Whore? Whore? Hall? Hall? Hot? 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 Ha? Ha? Hard? Hard? Ha? Ha? Hum? Hum? Her? Her? Hurt? Hurt? Yes, so these are into the, the tongue vowels. Can you feel those? Yes, obviously. But heart, just start on those tongue vowels again. Ha. Ha. Heart. Heart. Ha. Ha. Hat. Hat. Oh, hat. Hat. No, hat. H-U-T. Hum. Hum. Right, that's a better one. Her. Her. Hurt. Hurt. Ha. Ha. Hat. Hat. Hey. Hey. Head. Head. Hey. Hey. Hate. Hate. <laughs> Hit. Hit. Hid. Hid. He. He. Heal. Heal. High. High. Hide. 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 Yeah, and all those. those Is that things. another reason Americans have more trouble with Shakespeare? Because you, your all is there and our all is here. You know, I mean, where we all place it all. is lends itself to, to better yeah. proje projection than than Yeah, I, do, I mean, placed. I don't want to say that you know that that is that one is right or not because I think you can do it whichever. I don't yeah, honestly but it just, think it that just might. Projects, yeah, we don't it lends want to say that. To <laughs> No, I, I've, you see, the point is, I've just said standard, I've just said received pronunciation, standard English vowels, as Kathy has rightly pointed out. And I mean, you know, you would go to Northumberland and you would have a quite different set of vowels, and that's wonderful. I mean, Shakespeare in a Northumbrian accent is quite brilliant because it's such physical language, but all all of the accents have have um, a great, uh, I think, I mean, I, I just love things in accents. There's a wonderful company in, in the UK now, Yorkshire, which is doing Shakespeare with Yorkshire, in a Yorkshire dialect. And isn't is that it? a hard R in Yorkshire? No, not in Yorkshire. I mean, and certainly in Shakespeare's time, you know, war was war. I mean, John Barton, you, if you've seen his tapes, you, you, you will know from that. So it really is not to do that. What that was about was finding different, you know, was specifying that there are different um, shapes. But what I'm interested in right now, I don't want to get into trouble with anybody, <laughs> <laughs> politically. <laughs> what I'm interested in now is just us listening for a moment 
the, the different lengths in the vowels because that alters the movement of a line very much as we've seen with all tongues. But just say this, heart, heart. hard, hard. Harm. Harm. harm, harms, harms. fit, fit. Fill. fill, sorry, fit, fit. Thin. thin, fill, fill. Filled. filled, feet, feet. feed, Field. Field. fields, fields. Chase. chase, chain, chain. Change. change, changed. Change. Do you see the le those different lengths of vowels? What do you can you hear them? Depending on what the which word the vowel sound is in, it, it kind of dictates how much time you have to yeah. give it. <clears throat> because with ng, like nge on change, that makes it takes longer, and it also lengthens the vowel to an extent. So we have to be alert to that. It's nothing that you don't know intrinsically in yourself. It does do that, and we have got to be aware of that in a line. It is so important to hear the changing lengths of vowels. It sensitizes us to their possibilities, and it is something we're not normally aware of. So let us now look at how it works in a speech from Shakespeare. Ophelia, this one from Hamlet. Ophelia has just been devastated by her encounter with Hamlet. She believes him to be mad. And this speech tells us how she feels just by the very sound of it, as well as its sense. The length of the vowels are like cries. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen, see what I see. You feel her spirit is beginning to break. Don't read it, not too quick. Go. I. Slightly beat it through metrically. This is a particularly good one to do it on, right? So it's a what a no mind. The is here or thrown. The courtier's soldier, scholar's eye, tongue sword. The expectancy and rose of the fair state. I just want to remind us of the beat that is going on underneath. That iambic pentameter, ti tum ti tum ti tum ti tum ti tum. And how, when the sense stress breaks with the meter stress, just how startling and dramatic this makes it. Now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of time and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of the youth. Blasted with, with you can't, it's got to be blasted, isn't it? It's like she has actually been hit by lightning and is split down the middle. Because if it's fairly regular, obviously, you know, there's a lot of negotiation to go on between in those things like the so courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword. So you can be quite quick over one bit, but it actually is not too irregular until you get that sound blasted with ecstasy. And it's like that. Now, what I'd like us to do now is something really difficult, and that is, as though you're going to speak it, which we have done all, to, all through, as though you're doing that, but in fact only verbalize the vowel sounds. <laughs> so it's like this. If you get lost, don't worry, but it will be like, oh, or, uh, oh, or, I, e, e, or, oh. All right, just take it in your own way. Fill down. 
go O R O O O I E E O O I R A E O Listen to how the very sound of the vowels underpins the emotions involved. She is alone. They are a cry for someone to listen. Person, the, the, the deaf, yes, speak that way, yes, because they go for the vowel sounds. Oh, I'm yes, that's amazing. It is all there, isn't it? Woe is me, and it's not that we, you know, emphasize that, but it's well worth knowing that that's under there in that language. That the the last line is really rips your heart out, it's horrible, isn't it? It's because she it is it's someone desperately trying to communicate and and the last one is she is alone she says see what i see but other people can't you know you can't see through somebody else's eyes yeah. it's like speeches like with this kind of exercise you can oh absolutely things. i mean you have to try the exercises yeah. and everything some exercises work better for some things than really but on the whole they work for all but you just have to make choices now to the speech of the player king from Hamlet. Now the work on this text was a kind of touchstone throughout the workshop, for we kept coming back to it, working on the different qualities in the writing, uh, the texture of the language and the sense of storytelling that it gives. We worked on it first technically, for it makes a very good exercise for breathing, for the physicality and muscularity of the consonants, and also for its changing cadences and rhythms, which are the essence of good storytelling. Let's read the first part all the way through, and then we will just break up the second part and see what we find from it, quite quietly. You know, just want you to, to concentrate now on those words, on being on the words, the rugged Pyrrhus, okay. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, is the night Okay, I'm not quite satisfied. Okay, just feel that the, feel the vibration on that. The. Rugged. I want to feel that G. Rugged. Pyrrhus. He whose. It's got a zona whose. Who's, Sable, sable arms. But B is also an active sound. Sable arms. Black as his purpose. Did the night resemble. What? Resemble. Yeah, don't shout at me. I just want to feel these things. Did the night resemble. Has when he lay couched on the ominous. On the what horse? Ominous. This is your energy here. This is the physicality. You could run around, but I want it here. When he lay, go. When, when he, he lay, lay couched on the ominous, ominous horse, hath now this red and black. black sorry, this dread. No, hang on, dread. I want to feel that word. Have this red and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Head to foot, now is he total fools. Horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked with the parching streets that end the tyrannous and the damned light to their lord's murder. Roasted, Roasted in wrath and fire, and, and thus forsized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. Yeah, I'm honestly not advocating overdoing it, but sometimes you have to do that first to feel that, that uh, muscularity there. Could you feel it? Yeah. Now tell the story with that. But try, just try and feel that you've got the breath. Try and feel that you're doing it through there without exaggerating now, quite quietly. Go. The rugged Pyrrhus. 
He who sable arms black possessed did the night resemble when he lay couched on this horse. Hath now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Head to foot, now is he total ghouls, horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impasted with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and a damned right to their lord's murder, roasted in wrath and fire, and thus sized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, their hellish pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. And Polonius says, for God, well spoken with good accent and good discretion. That's quite important, because he's on the other side. <laughs> Can we just take it through, just break it up into... Um, points of where to breathe and just see what actually that, that opens up. But, but just before we do that, just, just to connect back with our breath, can you just sort of get comfortable and sit and just rock a little bit to free yourselves. Okay, and then just in your own time, just rock back a little bit as you let a breath in and just out through an F. So you allow that breath to really reach right down tangibly inside. And just in your own time, rock back. Let that breath in and out through an F. And just once more, just rock back. And with that breath out through an F. Okay, good. Now back onto the text. Let's take a breath in, fill down, and can we speak down to dismal on one breath? Okay, go. The rugged heroes, he sable arms, black as his purpose, did a night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, hath now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Fill down. Try and go down to murder. Go. Head to foot, now is he total ghouls, horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impasted with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and a damned light to their lord's murder. Fill down to the end. Go. Roasted in wrath and fire, and thus all sized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish spirits, old grandsire Priam seeks. Rest. Pretty good, actually. Did anybody cheat? Yeah. Yeah. I cheated once. <laughs> <laughs> it was surprising to me. Yeah? Good. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I thought, oh, I'll never get there, and then I, you know, I was out by the end. I was gasping. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's partly because you don't know the sense of it right, and you're not right. sure about how long it is, yes. Yeah, but you, it's, I, think that, I think that I use more breath than I need to a lot well, of the time. Well, that is the habit of speech now, isn't it? It's the mode of speech to take little breaths, right. in fact, and, and with writing now, whereas, in fact, you know, you, if you had to sing this, you could all sing this. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Yeah, sorry. But it's also the mode that, that, that somehow we don't quite use our full voice, do we? I and mean, that's not called upon, so again, we can be breathy as well. Right, bit, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, anything else? I suddenly realized what this sentence meant for the first time. Um, uh, there are so many parenthetical, it's the rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, hath now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Like this guy who had all this, you know, it's <laughs> the thought, you, if you break up the thought with a breath, it actually gets mm. more complex. That's the baseline, isn't it? Yeah. How the, how the breath actually does affect the thought. Yeah. Mm. And how we yeah. always feel we've got to explain it, which makes us cut it up. Right, right. Often. You stopped at each full stop, right? Would you ever say that's? I know, I know, there is no rule, no. but, but, but is, I mean, is it a place to start when looking at breath? I mean, I, th I mean, I think uh, yes. Yeah, to look at a whole clump of thought in inverted commas, that that would make sense, probably, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we stand up and do it? Yeah. And fill down. 
and quite sharp go. The rugged Hang on, can, can just, just start a little bit quiet. Don't start too ready. Just let yourselves get in the rugged Pyrrhus. Start a bit quieter, I think. Okay. Go down and. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms lack as his purpose the night resembled when he lay couched in the ominous horse, and now his dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Fill down and head, head to, to foot. foot. Now is he total ghouls, horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impasted with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and a damned life to their lord's murder. Fill down. Roasted, roasted, roasted in wrath and fire, and thus all sided with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. OK, great. Just sit down for a minute. Let's just take it again and just break it up for potential breathing um, points and just see what, what that brings up. Just before we do that, can we just sort of locate our breath actively? So if you're sitting comfortably, just rock a little bit. Good. And then just gently rock, rock back. So you just feel your weight. And then just come forwards. Shoulders free. Note to myself. <laughs> Good. And this time, as you just rock back, just allow your breath just to drop in. So just fill down with your breath, really right inside, and then just out through an F as you come forwards. Just easy. Just to feel that channel of breath coming through you and going on and out. And just repeat that in your own time. Just rock back. Feel your weight. And out with the breath. Great. And just once, just bring your hands up as you rock back and just sigh very, very gently into your hands to feel that, that breath, that resonant breath go. It is so important to keep checking on the breath making sure that the throat is open and that the voice is rooted and you are getting the most out of your resonance. And just sigh very gently, very yawny, drop the jaw, throat's open. Good, and just once more, <laughs> fill down. And out through an F, quite active. Good, and rock back. And now let's voice that breath as a V to feel the vibrations go. Feel the lips buzzing. Good, and in your own time, just rock back as you allow your breath in and out through a Z. Z. Good, and just one more. Fill down with your breath and a voiced TH. <laughs> so we'll go down to dismal, and then down to murder, and then down to seeks. Okay? Well, that's the optimistic idea anyway, okay? Fill down. And the text. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, hath now his dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Fill down and Head to foot, now is he total ghouls, horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impasted with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and a damned light to their lord's murder. Fill down, 
Roasted in wrath and fire, and thus o'ersized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish pirates, old grandsire, Priam seeks. And replace your brain. Good. What about that? The first two are hard. The first two are hard, yeah. <laughs> yes, I always found that I was really running out of breath. But somehow I felt that I could have to regulate it from the beginning, you know, not push out too much from the get-go with those first two bits. But the last one was yeah. easy to do. It's probably partly getting into the rhythm of it as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And um, if you don't quite know what exactly you're saying, then it's more difficult to organize your breath. So true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Now just read this through once more. And if you can read it at the same time, just lift your seats up off the floor as you bounce or, or rock or you know, just to feel the vibrations going through your body as we read it together. Okay? And with that breath behind what you're saying, feel down and onto the text. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms bound and his purpose did the night resemble, and he lay couched in the ominous horse, hath now this red and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. With your breath filled down and on, head to foot, now is he total ghouls, horridly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impasted with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and a damned life to their lord's man. Good with your breath filled down and Roasted in wrath and fire, and thus o'ersized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncle, the hellish pillars, old grandsire, Priam six. Great. Good. Yes, it does sound very good. Right. As opposed to the, our first ragged attempt before we did the warm up exercise, where it was just these little broken up yeah. breaths Word. and thoughts, and now suddenly it's this whole column. And the skill is to give the value to each in, uh, individual image, but to keep that energy going through. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You also pick words that you give more value to as you conserve your breath to make it through the whole section. Mm -hmm. You add value to certain words that deserve their <laughs> breath and ones that don't. That's great. Yeah, great. Should we do it once more standing up? If you want to jump for your breath, or, or swing the arms, or, or walk around the room, or, or just do it um, still, up to you. Let's do it once once more. Is that okay? Right, good. So, in, in your own time, off you go. Good though. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You see, when you make movement, it's very freeing, isn't it? Because you you then get the breath in naturally, basically. I noticed it with everybody reading together. When we first started doing it, I thought, boy, this is I'm not getting sort of I'm not. It just sort of seems like noise to me. And I think I don't know if Claire said someone said they said it, it kind of gives you the freedom actually to do ridiculous things yeah. that you'd be yeah. terrified to do if you're reading it alone. Yes. And I noticed like, yeah. the third, the, the, after Jimmy goes down, people started like doing yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah. it's, sort of, it's, it's wonderful. It yeah. allows you just to, yes, as you say, go with the language. And now for the story. There is such pleasure in being told a story, for it is, there is something in all of us that responds to the suspense in the language, the sounds, the richness, and the actor needs to be aware of this and to practice it. For in one way or another, he or she is always telling a story. Oh, Let's sit I down a minute. His antique sword, lies where it falls, 
Pyrrhus at Priam drives, and in rage strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. And senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow, with flaming top stoops to his face, and with a hideous crash takes prisoner Pyrrhus ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Ryan Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a tainted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, feared nothing. But as we often see against some storm, a silence in the heavens, the rack stands still, the bold wind speechless, and the orb below as hush as death. Anon the dreadful thunder doth rend the region, so after Pyrrhus pause, a roused vengeance sets in new work, and never did the Cyclops' hammers fall on Mars' armor, forged or proof in turn. With less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out, 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 out strumpet fortune, all you gods and general sinner take away the power. Break all the spokes and fellies from the wheel, and bowl the round knave down the hill of heaven as low as to the fiends. Okay, so what about that? Oh. This is too long. <laughs> this is too long. It shall be the barbers in your beard. That's half it's a, mine. It's, it's a really full great you know, like There's such yeah. emphasis. Yeah. It's don't like you're a stalking pack. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Just like that. Yeah. Like that but, yeah. I just feel the momentum. When his trellis explained this all to me, I had no idea what most of it meant <laughs> until he worked line by line through. But when his ear is nicked, when he's nicked, and that. And, and that moment of stillness as the storm gathers, mm. and it's just, oh, it's, suddenly it all changes, and there's this flow of these gathering, this gathering storm and that horrible, hideous silence before mm. the funnel cloud descends. It's almost like a play-by-play. -play. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, when you're listening to a fight or watching a football game, yeah. <laughs> yeah. describing all this stuff, and you're going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's very extravagant language, but it's no more that's happening any day now. Why I wanted to do this is that it is a piece of primitive storytelling, really, rather than something totally connected with character. Each actor now takes a line and finds its energy and excitement by doing a number of things with it. First, running. Anon, he finds himself striking too short at Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arms, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives in rage strikes wide. But with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow, with flaming top stoops to his base. And with a hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood. And like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But as we often see against some storm, the silence in the heavens, the rack stands still. The bold wind speechless, and the orb below as hush as death. Anon the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So after Pyrrhus pause, a rousing vengeance sets him new at work. And never did the Cyclops hammer fall on Mars's armor. Forged for proof eternal. With less remorse than Paris' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out, out, thou strumpet fortune. All you gods, in general, Sienna, take away her power. Break all the spokes and fellies from her wheels, and bowl the round knave down the hill of heaven as low as to the fiends. Hey, one more time, running about in order. Up. Okay. <laughs> Anon, he finds him striking too short at Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arms, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. An equal match, Pyrrhus at Priam drives, and rage strikes wide. 
But with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel the blow, with flaming top stoops to his base. And with her hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. For lo, the sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But as we often see against some storm, a silence in the heavens, the rats stand still, the bold winds speechless, and the orb below as hush as death. And on the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So after Pyrrhus falls, aroused vengeance sets anew at work. And never did the Cyclops' hammer fall on Mars' armor. Forward for proof turn. With less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out, out, thou strumpet fortune. All you gods in general synod take away her uh, power. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, oh. so, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, can you begin to, right, do you want to, uh, are you sort of uh, getting a bit familiar with it? It's a bit, we are doing it rather quickly. Right. What I would quite like to do is just enjoy it, okay? And... Uh, <laughs> I'd like you, I don't mind where you go, but just get on, on something, like a table or a chair or somewhere. I don't feel you've got to keep up with the time of it necessarily, but no, don't get up there yet. <laughs> You can, you've can. you got to get up there when your line is coming. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> Feet off the ground. Feet off the ground, anywhere. Right, go. Anon, he finds himself striking too short at Greeks. His antique sword, uh, rebellious to his arms, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal match, Paris at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide. But with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. And then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow with flaming top, stoops to his base. I love this exercise because by running around and speaking the language, your breath is working freely, you don't have to think about it. But also, by jumping on something, like a chair or whatever is available, you feel a sense of exhilaration with the language, an exhilaration with those words, and it empowers them and makes them live in another way. Again, some storm. A silence in the heavens. A rack stands still. The bold wind speechless and the orb below as hush as death. The rugged, a shot, <laughs> anon, <laughs> the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So after Pyrrhus pause, a roused vengeance sets him new a work. And never did the Cyclops' hammer fall on Mars's armor, forged for proof return. With less remorse than Paris' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out! <laughs> Out, thou strumpet fortune! All you gods and General Cena take away her power! It's really exciting. Really, because we don't have a chance to do that very often, do we? Yeah. Major and, it, like this. Yeah, and it gives each line yeah. a sense of importance in, in terms yeah. of right. moving the story along. Yeah. Yeah. It also fills the space literally. I mean, you couldn't do that totally, but to yeah. have thought that this yeah. is the space you're filling. Every... You're brilliant. You had to find it. Yes. When you didn't but, know where the person was. Because it's telling a story, we don't have the obligation of what are we supposed to feel. Oh, so brilliant. Just, yes, yes. Very, very obligation good. obligation is not dropping the ball. All right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry too much, but, you know, do it one more time like that, and you can make a gesture. If you don't get up on, a, on, a, on something, it doesn't matter, but make a big gesture, whatever. Okay. Anon, he finds himself striking too short at Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal match, Paris at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide. But with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow with flaming top, stoops to his base. And with a hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. Oh, no! His sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But 
as we often see against some storm. A silence in the heaven. The rack stands still. The bold wind speechless in the oar below as hush as death. Anon, the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So after Pyrrhus pause, arouse it vengeance sets him new a work. And never did the Cyclops' hammer fall on Mars's armor, forged for proof eternal. With less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword, now on falls on Priam. Out, out, thou trumpet fortune. All you gods in general sinner, take away her power. Break all the soaps and valleys from her wheel, and bow around me down the hill of heaven as low as the fiends. Brilliant. Is that beginning to feel good? <laughs> And it, the meaning becomes clear, doesn't it, as you do it? Does it? Yeah. Hopefully. Because <laughs> don't ask me what it means. <laughs> and it didn't seem so long. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all Which is really all that matters, isn't it? I mean, basically. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, we're going to really be serious with it. No, not serious. Not too serious. But I want us to get into a circle. And just take your time, you're telling this story now. You sort of rather quickly got through it. But telling the story, you can make any gesture you like, but into the circle. It can be loud, it can be quiet, whatever you like. But find your image. Just, okay, just mutter it through once, quite quickly. Just very quietly. And on he finds him. Uh, uh, no, he finds himself striking short of Greeks. Antique sword rebellious to his arm and lies with falls repugnant to command. Unequal matched Paris Apion drives in rage strikes wild. But with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father fall. Then senseless Iliad, seeming to feel this blow with flaming top, stoops to his base. And with a hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted terror, Pyrrhus stood. And like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But as we often see against some storm, a silence in the heavens, a rat stands still. The bold wind speechless, and the oar below as hush as death. Anon, the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So after Pyrrhus pause, a roused vengeance sets him new at work. And never did the Cyclops hammer fall on Mars's armor, forged for proof eternal. With less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword, now falls on Priam. Out, out thou strumpet fortune. All you gods in general, Sina, take away her power. Break all the spokes and fellies from her wheel, and bold around day down the hill of heaven as low as the fiends. Can you begin to hear this story evolving now? It's wonderful. Come into the middle. When it gets to Anon, he finds him. You can do anything you like into the middle. Telling the story, you can be quiet, loud, make a gesture, not make a gesture, it doesn't matter. Right, go. No, it's a bit, it's a bit careless. Just get into this story through the words. Three, go. The rugged Pyrrhus. He whose sable arm flapped his purse. Did the night resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse? And now this red and black complexion smeared with heraldry was Head to foot, now is his total rules. Horribly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons. Baked and impasted with the parching streets that then entered and began to fight to their lord's murder. Roasted in wrath and fire, and thus sore sizing with coagulant gore. With eyes like carbuncles, the hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire, Priam Cease. For God, my lord, well spoken, with good accent and good expression. Anon, finds him striking too short at Greeks. His antique sword 
rebellious to his arms, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched. Paris at Priam drives in rage, strikes wide. But with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Yes. Senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow with flaming top, stoops to his base. With a hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood. And like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But as we often see against some storm, a silence in the heavens, a rack stands still. The bold winds speechless in the orb below, as hush as death. Anon the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So after Pyrrhus' pause, a roused vengeance sets him new at work. And never did the Cyclops' hammer fall on Mars's armor, forged with proof eternal. With less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out, out, thou strumpet fortune. All you gods in general, sinner, take away her power. Break, Break all the spokes and fellies from the wheel, and blow the round maid down the hill of heaven as low as to the fiends. Now, into the last part of the player king. As I've said, this is a primitive piece of storytelling, which appeals to us all, I think. And what is interesting is how the structure and sound of the language, its spaces and rhythms and cadences, can lift the meaning through so we get not only its logical sense, but its underlying spirit and emotion. You began to feel the storytelling of the earlier part, didn't you? That it has a kind of music to it, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to find this music here. I might, it, it has that muscularity, that sort of um, aggression in the language, right? But. I want us to find a music to it. I might kind of um, conduct you a bit. Right. I might conduct you a bit. But I don't really approve of that. I don't really... <laughs> I don't like my... But I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I don't like myself for doing it. All right. Okay. But who are woe had seen the mobile queen Run, run barefoot up, up and down, down threatening the flames with bliss and room. A clout upon that head where late the diadem stood. For a robe about her lank and all or A blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. Who this has seen? With tongue in venom steeped, against fortune's state would treason have pronounced. God, hang on, but if, but if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made. Unless thing mortal move them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. <laughs> Or do, you, do you see that there is that possibility? Now, I'm not saying, I really am not saying that that is the right possibility, but there is something in a music, in a cadence, and it's different in every culture, in every language. What we want to hear differs from person to person, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? What moves us differs from person to person. I've been sort of wondering why we're doing this. Uh, I, don't, I mean, just mean, as a group, I'm, I, I get different yes. things from it. And this time I really, for the first time, thought, oh, wow, this is, by erasing individual uh, worries of character, yes. by telling a story as a group, it's, of course, at yes. first it's really muddled and yeah, yeah, confusing, yeah. but as we know now, now that when we go back to the stuff we now really know well together, it's really starting to have yeah. a form, and I'm realizing that the words themselves, the story in itself, 
um, it, the story is, is, is sort of valid unto itself without forcing a character onto it. Just telling this story is the character, mm-hmm. in and a way. You, you also, when we get very close together, and we're getting more familiar, you, it's, it's, it's more like one voice yes. than we can. And then you start to physically feel the power mm. of that yes. one voice. Yes. It just goes yes. through your and body. Exactly. Then, of course, you must all go away and do it for yourselves. And it is a one person. You know, it is yes. a one person telling. But the only way we can reach that at the moment, and I think actually the only way anyway, even if we had more time, it's very freeing, as somebody said yesterday, or several people said yesterday, to do things together. Yes. Because you would never want to take, you would never want to do what I just told you to do. <laughs> And really not enough work is so often done on that when you're rehearsing a play, is it? That collective um, that collective voice, which is not, again, I mean, nothing to say don't be anarchic and different, but there is a collective voice out of which that is coming. It takes it? a lot of pressure on one to perform yeah. or to feel that pressure. You do have as an actor, yeah. when you do come into the rehearsal room and you do sort of feel, oh my God, I'm useless and I'm hopeless and I can't play the player king or whoever it is. And if you did it all together, it just yeah. takes that responsibility off you. Yeah. And you actually find the, the story of the speech yeah. together as collectively. Yeah. And you then you go off on your own way. Because, sort of yeah. I think when I, when yeah. I first, as we yeah. said it out loud, before, it just yeah. seemed so melodramatic and yeah. it's primitive yeah. in storytelling. Yeah. And, and, but as we, as the story became yeah, a prominent thing, yeah. it was no longer. Oh, brilliant! It was, it was yeah. no longer melodramatic. Great. Right. Shall we break it down? Then that's great. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. <laughs>